Hi, and welcome to the presentation of my poster called a Versatile Peak Based Civic KD Receiver. We are working on Quantum Key Distribution, QKD, which, as you may already know, allows two parties to exchange a secret key, while quantum physics ensures that no ifs droppers has any meaningful information on that key. And more specifically, we are working on continuous variable QKD. In discrete variable QKD, information is encoded on some discrete degrees of freedom, like the polarization of single photons. And in CV, continuous variable, information is encoded on continuous degrees of freedom, and namely the quadratures of the electromagnetic field. Advantages of continuous variable include the use of standard telecom components for the transmitter and receiver, where in DV, you would need specific detectors for the receiver. We might also obtain higher key rates. On the downside, CV requires more classical post-processing and is a less mature technology. So, Alice is sending coherent states, thus with minimal uncertainty according to the uncertainty principle, and on Bob's side, we can measure the noise that has been added during the transmission compared to the minimal noise. Assuming that all this noise is coming from an adversary, we can upper bound the information that has been acquired by the adversary and then obtain the secret curate by comparing the total exchange information between the two parties and this bound. The setup we are considering is the following one. On one side, Alice, the transmitter, is composed of a continuous wave laser that is going into an IQ modulator to modulate the signal according to the chosen distribution. After some attenuation and feedback photodiode, the signal is sent to Bob, the receiver, through a channel of transmittivity T and excess noise Xi. On Bob's side, the signal is coupled onto the photonic circuit. The local oscillator that is used to amplify the signal is taken from Alice laser and sent through a separate fiber. The local oscillator is also coupled to the chip. The output of the chip goes into an electrical amplification circuit and is sent to the acquisition device. The photonic chip is composed of the following, as we can see on the layout. On the right, we see the grating couplers. Let's isolate these two. The two inputs are mixed in a 50-50 beam split, and then each output goes into an electronical variable optical attenuator. These attenuators are here to ensure that the average optical power is the same on the two paths. The two paths then go to the photodiodes that are connected in a homodyne detector way. The difference of the photocurrent is then amplified by the electronics. The hole forms an homodyne detector. Each chip has two usable homodyne detectors, but only one is connected to the electronics. Thus, two boards could be used to make a phase diverse heteronite detector, which would be the standard way to measure both quadratures at the same time. In our experiment, we use a frequency displacement on the signal to perform the so called RF heterodyne, as we will see later. It only requires one board. On the left picture, you can see the chip, the electronics, and the coupling device. So we characterize the receiver by measuring important figures for CVQKD, namely the clearance, the linearity, and the bandwidth. The clearance is the ratio between the short noise due to the input light and the electronic noise, which is measured without any input light. And we expect it to be more than 10 dBs. For this detector, the linearity is ensure up to 8 milliwatts of local oscillator power, with a clearance that is more than 20 dBs at low frequencies as it can be seen on the top left and right figures. The bandwidth with 10 dB clearance is around 150 MHz, but allowing 7 dB clearance with the end of the spectrum that can be used for classical signals, as we will see later, and we reach a bandwidth of around 250 MHz. We then used our receiver in the system with the setup we saw at the beginning. First, we generate symbols following a discrete constellation, which is here QPSK, quadratic phase shift king, these symbols are then modulated using a filter that minimizes intersymbol interference, in our case, a race cosine filter. The signal is then displaced in frequency here around the center frequency of 70 MHz. This allows the detection of both quadratures with a single coherent detector. Pilot tone is then added at 170 MHz, multiplexed in frequency. This is used as a phase reference to recur the clock and correct the phase noise. A ZF truth sequence that features autocorrelation properties is used as a synchronization sequence and is set at the beginning of the frame. Our digital signal processing algorithm is capable of recovering the symbols sent by Alice as shown in the right figure. 
Having measured the performances of our receiver, we can, by taking standard values for the excess noise, estimate the secret key rate. Using what we saw with a symbol rate of 100 MB, we can have a secret key rate in bit per second. We see that there is definitely a region where the receiver is able to exchange key even in the pessimistic scenario for the excess noise. Under the figures, we have summarized the performances of our receiver. Next steps are the measurement of the excess noise in the real setup and the implementation of a local local oscillator, which would only require one fiber for the setup to work. And the project is a full transmission with photonic integrated devices, so for the receiver and for the transmitter. And this brings me to the end of my post presentation. Thanks for listening.